Okay, Pablo Tiz, the FX method. Uh, I'll hand over to you and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much, Simon. So we're back here at Round the Clock Training, which is always great to be at. And we're going to be talking, it's a general lecture today, about what are, what are really the pros and cons of automated trading. Because many people approach automated trading in a, in a very, well, they don't really know what, what it is about. They, they have wrong expectations. And what we want to, to do in this, in this lecture today is to clear those wrong expectations up. For the good and for, and for the bad, actually. So it's going to be quite a quite an quite an honest session on what automated trading is and what it is not. Okay. So we are the FX method. We 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 took this model from from Einstein because many traders are repeating always the same things over and over again for many many years, and and they expect to have different results, which makes no sense. So our invitation is you do things differently. I don't care if you're going to jump into automated trading into quantitative uh, trading mode, but the thing is you, we invite you to, to do things differently, to think things differently. So that, that's the invitation and that's actually the purpose of this, of this uh, lecture today. So that's the syllabus. We're going to be talking what actually automated trading is. There's actually three ways to do it or to understand it. Uh, then we'll be talking about what are the benefits over manual trading, which is very polemic and many manual traders don't like to hear. And then we'll really see what, what are the misunderstood aspects on automated trading. And then we'll have a recap on that. And if we have a little bit of time, I can show you a little bit around what, what we do in MT4. So it becomes a little bit more practical. Otherwise, it's going to be quite a dry session. And I think we are we're just having exactly like 15 minutes. So we'll see how it fits in at the end to a little bit of practice, to show you around. In, in MetaTrader if, if there's a little bit of chance to do that. So when we're talking about automated trading, actually uh, we talk about many different things together. And part of the confusion comes from that. Uh, one of the things we're talking about is when we get, when we hook up to a signal service or an alert service, from a trader or from a website, there's so many of those. It's very popular lately. And I think it's going to become more and more popular over the mobile trading, because mobile trading invites very much for signals. And population is going to go, in this century, mobile, uh, not only in, in Europe and in the West, but in the emerging countries. Many countries in Africa are actually more mobile-oriented than getting really land phones. So mobile trading is, is going to be a very big, very big trend. And it's already becoming a very big trend. So signals is part of that. So when we get an alert, we, we either have the chance to say yes or no at the very end, or uh, it gets through uh, into our platform and it makes the trade. Whichever way, uh, it's, it's a signal uh, in the sense that we we are not the, we don't cause this. We actually don't know what are the rules behind it. We just buy a service. We know maybe some basic ideas of what it is trading, if it's a trend system or what is behind it. But in generally in general in signals we don't have any of the decisions behind this. We're just a, a plain end consumer. But that is actually one of the ways to do automated trading. In my view, it's not the best way. It's a good way to start if you're a newbie to trading. It's okay to get some signals for a while, but just imagine the signals are not good anymore, or they were good and they're not good any longer, or the volume, the money management is getting worse with time. There's so many things about it that can go wrong, and in the end you don't have the control that I really, I really would recommend you not to use that very long. The, the best way to go, in our view, is to become sooner or later a fully automated trader. That, that's what you should really want to achieve. In between of those two options, there is the semi-automated trader, or the yeah, which basically bases himself maybe on a robot, something which is programmed, or or or, or a signal itself, and and the exit is done by him. That's also automated trading. You could have just the entries, 
uh, in scalping and decide uh, where to go out, or you could do the same thing actually in, in trend trading, and that would be right as well. Same in breakout, uh, you get just the entries uh, directly, or, or you choose at the very end through an alert that you want to take this, this, this entry or not, and that's semi-automated. I've been doing this for one and a half years, which is not bad. I've been using, for example, FabTurbo as a, so to say, signal provider, and it didn't go bad, but the problem is that psychology kicks in, and very often those exits, uh, if they don't have a good ratio, they may destroy the profit profitability of your strategy, and that's not very good if it happens on the long term. So you need to be a really good trader to be semi-automated, but it's not bad. It's a choice in between, and, and it's acceptable. The ideal is you let the robot do everything. You enter the market, you exit the market, you move the trailing stop, and everything is fully automated. That's, that's ideal. Not only the entries, the exits, as well, the trailing stops, position management, everything can be done by a robot. Even the combination of many of those can be automated. You could even automate to stop bots, when to start bots, when to have more money management. Uh, that's trailing stop, that's position management, that's money management. All of this can be automated, not necessarily MetaTrader, but to automate a big chunk of it, actually. So that's the ideal. That's how many hedge funds work. They don't have human intervention whatsoever. And that's, that's the place to be in. I don't know if you're aware that 90% of the stock market today is moved by high frequency trading. Uh, and many, many hedge funds uh, are going the automated way for some reason that in the end part, uh, over the long run, we have so much uh, improvement in technology that in the long run, they, they are better. They have better results than human beings. So if there's some questions about these three types or three aspects of automated trading, just shoot them in the chat and Simon's going to read them to me or I'm going to read them over here. And if there's no questions, then we will continue. Okay, let me raise the screen here. So let, let's define then a, what actually is a robot first. Because uh, if we don't have a good definition for that, uh, maybe we, we get confused uh, what we are talking about. And I say always, I compare it uh, to a table. And if you watch a table, actually any table, for it to be stable, would need at least three legs. Because if you have a table with only two legs, uh, it would be extremely unstable. And three legs will do, actually. So I would say out of the six possibilities, out of the six legs, a, a trading system to be robust, to be able to be fully automated, you should have at least three parts of this, three aspects. You should have either entry rules, exit rules, and filters, or you could have entry rules, exit rules, and money management, and that would do. Ideally, if you have more legs, uh, the table is going to be more stable if they're well set, these legs. So what? What are this, uh, these rules, actually? The entry rules is deciding when to enter the market and, and, and how to enter the market. And it's usually composed of two parts. It's composed of what we call a setup. Setup is to watch for the right conditions for this type of strategy or, or system. And we would say, for example, if you want to hunt rabbits, then you better are in the right field, in the right uh, part of the land where you find rabbits at this time of the year, and if you want to hunt mm, elephants, you better go to Africa and, and not to Siberia. Uh, it seems quite obvious, but it's not. So you need to have the right setup. That's the first thing. And it, depending on the trading style, uh, you need to watch that this is really occurring in the market right now, in this very moment, that you find these conditions. If you want to do a trend trade, you better have higher volatility. If you want to do, a, I don't know, a breakout trade, you better look for price levels or indicator levels that they're broken through. 
So the setup is the first part of the entry rules, and the second part is what we call the trigger or the confirmation, and a, any entry rule should be composed of at least two parts. If you don't have both parts, uh, you have a problem, you have a gun which is loaded, and you may be shooting your, 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 your feet all the time, and that's really bad. And another aspect of the entry rules is they're always they're having the logic and. It's always something in, in, in logic languages like uh, we have a setup and we shoot, right? Uh, or, or whatever. It's when the moving average number one crosses the moving average number two and the next candle is open and uh, the moving average blue moving average is still above the red one, for example. It's always AND logic. That's very important because many people get confused on this. Exit rules. Exit rules, I would say the minimum that a trading system should have always is a stop loss. If, if you don't have a stop loss, as a matter of fact for us, it's not a trading system. And you could argue on this and you could say, well, uh, there is such trading systems that don't have stop losses, it's true, but uh, they will lose their account sooner than later. So, for me, it's not a trading system by definition. That's the most basic exit rule, but there is other ones. You could have a take profit. That's in the positive realm, right? You could have a timer. The timer is, for example, uh, such an exit rule like if after, in scalping, if after 300 minutes I haven't reached my take profit or, or my stop loss, I'm going to take just a loss of 5 pips if it happens. I'm just going to take a little loss, which is always better than take stop loss, right? That could be a timer, for example. Uh, in that way, you, you will exit uh, trades which are already still dated that are not valuable anymore, and you're not wasting your time on those trades. And you'll improve the statistics of the trading system in a way that, in the long term, you're going to make more money. Uh, another one is, uh, which is a very interesting exit rule. It's called the reverse rule. Let's say, let's say you you got a setup for an uptrend, right? You got, for example, two moving averages, and these two moving averages gave you an up signal, and a long signal, sorry which is a signal in a beginning uptrend. We could we could actually watch it here. And let me, I cannot erase the, the letters there. They're a bit annoying probably, but uh, because I need them for later. But let's do a simple, very simple, uh, let's take here the euro dollar, for example, and on an hour, one hour chart. I'm going to take just very quickly two moving averages. This is meta trader four. This is a long moving average, that's, that's okay, that's blue. And then I'm going to take a short moving average, that could be the period of 21, and that's going to be a red moving average. Yeah. And here, for example, we could have several days ago, that's a classical, right? When they cut the short moving average is cutting the long moving average, right? That gives you now a sell signal here, which was quite okay if you watch it. And imagine you are in the trade, you sold here, and you've got the reverse signal here. Whatever gave you the entry reverses, that could be an exit signal, actually. That's a very uh, usual way to, to exit trades, actually. I don't know if it was understood what the reverse rule is. And it's a very simple way to exit trades in, in many different systems. Filters. There is a lot of different filters. A filter is added on the system. A, it's something additional. It's not the entry rules itself. It's just one more layer that we put in order to avoid bad trades, to have less bad trades and more good trades, that the proportion of bad trades and good trades that you filter out, it's bigger. Otherwise, there's no sense in using a filter. A filter shouldn't have either, shouldn't over-filter, that's actually uh, over-optimizing or co-fitting. You could find a filter which is perfect that just gives you only the 10 best trades, 
uh, over 10 years, <laughs> and then you have a trade a year, that's, uh, that's not going to help either, because if you make just one trade per year, you are completely over-optimized. And, and filters should be dealt with care. Uh, you shouldn't use too many of those. Maybe one or two filters, the best ones you find. But if you put too many filters, uh, you'll have a problem with uh, curve fitting, uh, over-optimizing, and then sure the trading system is not going to make you any money. The most basic filter, and people really tend to forget it, is the hourly filter. The hourly filter just basically uh, avoids that you're trading in bad hours. And there's bad hours for trading systems, right? If you're trading, for example, Asian scalping or so-called Asian scalping, which is in the night, which many bots do, actually, by the way, uh, Fab Turbo, Erroneous, EA Boss, and all such commercial bots are actually Asian scalpers. So you should trade them after 22 p.m. London time till 24 p.m. London time. That's the best two hours. So you need to filter out the bad hours. Another, another filter which is very known is the session filter. Like you would trade only the American session or you would trade only the European session or you would trade only the Asian session. That's a very typical filter. Another one which is very known is the volatility filter. Don't trade when it's, the volatility is too high if you're scalping, or don't trade when the volatility is too low if you're doing breakouts, for example, right? High volatility or low volatility filters are classical filters, right? Once you have all these three, you could automate this into rules. Uh, we do this in MetaTrader 4, uh, and you could have what we call a robot. And it's quite easy to be done, actually. There is builders, there's software that does this, there's, there's coders, they would do a simple system for $50. In Eastern Europe, you can find Bulgarian, Ukrainian, uh, whatever. They, they program quite inexpensively. That's really not difficult to get done. The main thing is the idea. You must have a good system behind it. Otherwise, it's, even if you automate it, it's not going to get better. So position management, just to make, to finish this slide, uh, is basically composed of three aspects. For example, when you move the, the stop loss and you're trailing, trailing means that you, you move the stop loss in your favor uh, just to secure earnings or to lose less. That's actually not an exit rule. That's position management because you're already in the trade and you are only securing more and more earnings. The other way of doing position management is using a partial exit. For, for instance, you could be entering with one lot, or if you're doing a, a spread betting, you're betting one pound per pip, and you decide to exit with half of the position in earnings or in losses. That's part of position management. And the last possibility, and you could combine all these three, is re-entering trades. I hope it's not too confusing that all these three belong to position management. So if you automate all these four aspects plus these other two, which you could do as well, you could tell the bot, don't trade more than 2% each time, and all that stuff, you would have a bot. And as I said, it's not so difficult. So if you have any questions regarding what a trading system is for us, because it's a very precise definition. Just go ahead and, and make your questions. Otherwise, I'm going to go directly into the, this was like an intro. So now the real topic begins, actually. And for, for me, it's actually clear. I mean, if you have to decide between being all day long in front of the screen or making a bot which takes a lot of time actually and optimizing it and testing it and stuff I for me the choice was made actually many many years ago I'm already over eight years trading right now so I'm talking in one account I have 60 bots running I could show you actually later at the end of the lecture and it's, it's a no-brainer I mean if you have 60 traders you pay no salaries right 
and you have 60 different strategies being watched at the at the same time it's a no-brainer but let, let, let's watch what what we really look for as a trader many, many people enter trading because they, they want financial freedom they want the ability to to make a living and live I don't know in Marbella or live at the beach or, or live in the Caribbean and and make money and that's that's a very good reason to start and to do trading and the things you need to to understand and I don't know if you read Kiyosaki but uh, in his second book which is the cash flow quadrant he explains actually the jump from a uh, employee to self-employed is not the best jump you can do you should be jumping from an employee mode to an investor mode and many people confuse this and they go from what I call one type of slavery which is having a job depending on your boss's moods and all of that all the panoply of issues you can have at a job right and they jump into the memory of the self-employment and in trading that means staying long hours in front of the screen spending 10 hours uh, on day trading watching for those trades to arrive and it's actually your choice but it, it may be beautiful at the very beginning but once you have been doing this for many many years uh, you may be bored you may be tired or you simply don't don't feel anymore you don't have any more this this test you used to have to stay in front of the screen so that's one of the reasons actually I jumped what very very early into automated trading because I didn't want to spend so so many hours in front of the screen I didn't want to depend on a schedule I'm, I don't like to wake up early for example and I didn't want to do the morning session just very very early, very early for me and to quit a job to wake up so early was really not a choice for me so that's one of the things of the reasons or one of the handicaps actually you have in manual trading maybe you are not in the mood that day or you're sick right you could sick for a week or for a few days you cannot do the trading and you're obliged and this doesn't happen in automated trading the other thing which I feel is the biggest handicap in manual trading is psychology psychology is really a killer you can do you can read as many books as you want you can go to a psychologist you can go you can have a coach I have been receiving coaching for over two and a half years which helps me as a trader and definitely because I still need a little bit of psychology <laughs> uh, help as an automated trader but not so much as uh, a manual trade action because I mean my risk levels are really a hundred percent kept by the robots and it didn't happen to me in my manual trading I've been a manual trader for one and a half years I've been a trading overall for eight years so five and a half years were automated purely automated one and a half years were combined and in my view that's my personal opinion which is not it's my it's my little truth uh, there's no color this one and a half years where I was in front of this of the screen suffering many of the trades because I, I did the position management wrongly of course and the money management was too heavy uh, it's so different when you have the bots doing that you you, you have actually no no, 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 not such a heavy burden in psychology as you do in manual trading. And one of the big reasons or big handicaps in, in, in manual trading is when things go wrong, and believe me, they do go wrong sooner than later, uh, you don't know what's wrong. Is it the market? Right? Because it could be the market changed. Is it your trading system that it doesn't work anymore? your system is not the right system for the moment or uh, the system needs a new set of parameters the tuning of the system is wrong right or is it the psychology when things go wrong it can be any of these four things and let me tell you as a manual trader it's very very difficult to decide which one is wrong and many times oftentimes it's two of them Oftentimes, it's, you need a new setting, you need a new re-optimization of the parameters of the system, 
and you're applying the psychology wrongly, your, your money management is wrong. And these two things together, they become invisible in manual trading. Whilst in automated trading, we can't distinguish. We can see because it's the same bot. So the system didn't change. It's 100% it's doing the same. It's, it's not changing ever unless you change the code, right? And you can distinguish. You can take decisions. You, can, uh, you have more chances to decide what is the factor. What is the factor that's making that things don't go as they did before? So it's it's very very helpful that you can uh, divide the, all these four factors, and you can make decisions which are really uh, based on on knowledge, not based on opinion. Okay, this is really one of the most important reasons for me to do automated trading as I have a mathematical physics background I'm, I'm quite a logical person and I try always to to find the reasons why things wouldn't work anymore the right way and and it's very it's very important to keep always these four aspects market system setup or parameters and psychology these are really the four aspects to any training style and, and if you cannot know which one changed, it's very, very difficult to make correct decisions. Okay, so this cons of manual trading, I just did a slide to, 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 to make it even more important, but it's basically the opposite of the other slide. This, the next slide. The cons of manual trading become automatically the pros of automated trading. So, a, you don't need to be in front of the screen all day long. You don't have emotions. The bots don't get sick ever. You have them in a vi virtual private server. That's basically a remote computer. Many of the brokers will give you VPSs, virtual private servers, for free. If you trade a decent volume, if not, you can get a VPS for free for the first year in Amazon. So I tell my students, that's no money. Okay, that's really not not my, not a big sum. Otherwise, you could be pay, be paying normally twelve dollars per month. So a VPS is really the way to go because you don't want the bots. The bots need to be twenty four five trading for you. They need to be all day in the market. They need to be uh, watching for the different entries. There's many different bots you have in your account, right? And they work all the time. I mean, that's a great thing. A human being cannot be 24 hours watching the screen, or shouldn't, okay? So that's really one of the big pros. There is no psychology to bots, actually. So far, as I know, I, I, never, I never talked with them, okay? So, so you're really safe. If you're having problems with psychology, you should really consider automated trading. And the fourth aspect, which I touched on before, which is for me the the biggest reason to do automated trading is I know which part is going wrong because we have a portfolio. You can turn off this very specific part. For instance, let's say we wouldn't be having a trend year, which I think it's going to be a trending year. As it looks, it's quite trendy. January was quite trendy in the forex market. It's quite moving. There's a lot of news, a lot of fundamentals. That's good for trends. So, But let's say, for example, you would be in 2012 which was not so trendy, you would see that it doesn't work very well, the trend systems, you would turn them off. So basically, you only need to turn off and on, and you can do this on the Saturdays. It's not a big involvement. You need to have enough replacements, enough new bots. So once you have the thing set up and running, it's less time involving, and you will distinguish these four factors. You will know whether it's the market, repeat that, market, whether it's the trading system, whether it's the trading parameters, or whether it's your psychology, what is wrong. As we don't have psychology, this is factor out. You don't have it. This problem, so you only need to find out what of these three aspects is going wrong for every trading system, and that makes things much more easy. And as you have different players, what we do usually is we play always with 11 players. 
like a soccer team and we have goalkeepers well we have more than one goalkeeper which is not very precise but uh, we have midfielders defenders strikers and you'd be playing with that so if you have a striker which is not doing so well you could just turn this striker off but you still have the other 10 systems and that really helps you a lot so automated trading is a, a complete different aspect of trading and in, and it looks very very different differently from from manual trading I made an additional slide here which is coming now onto your screen and there's another another benefits additional benefits you'd be getting from automating your training and these are actually the ability to trade all day long right that's a very important one and believe me at the beginning you love this to be watching the screen and that but over the years and you can talk to traders who have been more than five years ask them they don't have the same feelings the same they, they don't love it so much anymore okay a uh, you can combine in automated trading that's not very possible in manual trading you can do trend trading you can scalp you can do breakout you can do range trading everything all together in the same account just with the right risk levels and the combination is so much uh, one of the strengths of automated trading and you could never have this in manual trading you couldn't be good uh, you cannot be a good scalper and a trend trader and a breakout trader normally manual traders specialize and they should do so because it takes so many years to watch the charts to understand what you like the trending the trade the trading style you really that that is good for you and so on and so on that you become a specialist and it's right so and in in automated trading uh, the beauty is I can be in a specialist in all of that I just need to have the right bots which are different in the coding in the rules as we saw before the sex legs the rules and I can just learn to optimize that's part of our education actually in our advanced education you learn to treat them differently you need to treat trend trading one way scalping another way breakout another way right so you know the differences and how to deal with them and that gives you so much a uh, edge over other traders because you are able to combine them okay so this is the the game we call it the soccer team that's the ideal to have 11 players where you risk no more than 2% of your capital on each player and put them to play together okay and this adds up to having less risk that's one of the reasons I, I really very soon jumped into automated trader training because I was noticing I was risking so much and if you have a small account it doesn't make really a difference difference if you're training to do two thousand pounds or two thousand dollars that's a very small account but if you're trading a bigger account twenty thousand thirty thousand fifty thousand and you're risking each time around two percent it's a big figure and what you can do with automated trading a uh, trading a bigger account is that you reduce the risk levels and you just put more players so instead of be risking on a 30 grand account your 600 pounds you're risking probably only 200 or 300 half of it and a uh, you reduce your risk and at the same time because you're having more players you're increasing your profits and that's quite paradoxical you may be saying well but if you reduce the volumes well the thing is that I have decorrelated systems together and and my, my profits go really they become very 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 big so if you add almost all of these benefits together a uh, you understand that hedge funds and investment banks are doing this it's obvious why shouldn't they I mean technology is very inexpensive you can buy a computer to optimize for less than 600 pounds a fast computer and we will tell you in our education how to build those together with parts how to how to get such a computer uh, set up which is no money actually five six hundred pounds for a computer VPS you can get for free in Amazon which was 
you couldn't imagine 20 years ago. You would have a computer 24-7 working for you for free in the cloud. Well, it's inexpensive or close to zero. And, and this technology uh, advancements make it so, so much easier for the retail trader to do what the hedge fund is doing. The only thing is you need the knowledge. Okay, you, you really need the knowledge. That's actually the picture uh, that this is the most close, pic closest picture of what for me a manual trader is. I mean, no joke. You know from which movie it is? I guess you do. And it, it's like, it, I know that you heard set up for gut strategies, just do this trade in the morning, but did it work? Let's be honest. When you're starting to trade, are you making money just watching charts for five minutes? In full honesty, the majority of the time, it doesn't work. You need to really get an in-depth knowledge. And, and you need to spend so many hours in front of the screen. So it's really up to you if you really want to go this route. In the end, also if you become an automated trader, it's good that you know about manual trading. But not necessarily you need to know everything about charts, right? So I talked about all the good sides, about all the upsides, and I, I said I wanted to be honest in this lecture. And I presented in a fair way all, your, all the benefits, which are really tremendous, right? But I need really to say what is wrong with automatic trading. And this comes now in the next slides. Because I think otherwise the, this lecture would be extremely unbalanced, and it would be only one one more of these cheesy lectures I see from time to time about the great things about trading and how great everything is, and how quickly we can become millionaires, which is actually not true. And I need to tell you what what the downsides are, and you need to know them before taking an informed decision whether whether this is a route you can consider. So just take note of the, of the next, and I'm sure Simon is recording this. You can watch the video one more time. You can be part of his community and, and re-watch it and stop the slides so you have an idea of what was talked about. And uh, this part is a very important part of the lecture. So there's pitfalls. There's pitfalls, and the pitfall, the first pitfall is the learning curve. The learning curve in automated trading is much more high and you need much more knowledge. Not more knowledge, much more. People that have been to my lectures in London, and we have had over, already so far over more than 1,000 people in the last lectures registered, and not everybody showed up. You should have showed up if you registered, but many people came over. We had the last course, we had a client course in Axie Trader in the city of London yesterday, no, Tuesday, and 12, 15 people came over, they spent 12 hours with us, with their computers, with the laptops, and they understood one thing, they need so much more knowledge, and that's the honest way to go. So you need more education. It, you will not do it just with some free videos. You will not do it with just a downloading MetaTrade and trying on your own. It's so much more complex. And uh, I really recommend get educated very early, in a very early stage. And even if it's a lot of information, try to get uh, the knowledge at the very beginning to, to, so you really spend your time properly. There's a lot of complexities to it. You need to understand on scalping how bot will work, what is the execution, what is slippage. Uh, you need to be computer savvy. You need to be good with computers. Right? How do you use computers the proper way? You don't need to be an IT expert, but uh, it definitely would help. But you need to be quite okay with computers. It's not so simple as just clicking here and clicking there, and that's it. No, you need to be okay with numbers. You don't need to know high mathematics. You don't need uh, difficult formulas like quantum electrodynamics, which is a thing I had to learn in university. You don't need that, but you need to be good with numbers. You need to love numbers for automated trading. You need to be good in, in making a quick uh, decision with numbers, okay? And you need a lot of work at the beginning. To set up the bots, 
to understand which parts are good, which parts are, what's are bad, to try them, to put them in the market, in the demo, to experiment. You need much more time at the beginning than in manual trading. And I need to really stress this out. At the beginning, the first year is going to be tough. From there on, if you are good and you did your, your, your due diligence, you did your job, uh, I've seen students, they are only working on Saturdays and a few hours, and that's enough. But the first year, it's going to be really time involving. But in the end, if you're really serious about trading and really serious about also manual trading, you'll be spending years. So let's be honest, in the end, you are, you're building up because you're building uh, what I call the soccer team, right? You know already this part is working for you. You have this other system that is working for you as well. And you are adding up. It's accumulative. So yes, it's more time involving. You need more knowledge, OK? But it's going to be accumulating over the long term, OK? So it's not for everybody. You need to really have, you need to have the willingness to invest this time. You need to want to acquire the knowledge. It's not an easy ride, OK? And there is actually not set, not a single set and forget part. There are, but these are all martingales, right? They will blow your account sooner than later. I know all of them. I can give you even the names. I can tell you this bot will double your account. Might be in five months, in three months. But in these three months, you'll have high chances of losing all the capital. That's, for me, gambling. So it's not recommendable. We do a very conservative trading. And that's what we actually teach at the FX method. We teach more like institutionals would trade, or do trade, actually. And that's what, in the long term, you want. I mean, I don't know. Many people here in trading, they're a bit older. We're in our 40s, 50s. We're not so young anymore. We're looking for retirement. We're looking for an extra income. We're looking for an extra activity, right? And we're not looking to go to the casino, because actually, the casino is more fun. If we really want to gamble, we, we don't need to trade, OK? So so uh, let's take it serious. And it's an activity. It's a profession. And you need your time for that. The other thing is that people have really a confusion about bots. Uh, they, 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 today I had a phone call one more time from a client. Tell me just the name of the best bot. And it's really annoying. I mean, it's like there is not the best bot. There is not the holy grail. There is not the, the fast, quick solution. There is no quick fix in this and in nothing in life. And if, if somebody tells you there's a quick fix, uh, this person is probably very close to, to a scammer, to be a scammer. So you need to learn. You need to learn. There's no other way. I mean, I'm sorry. There's no other way. And the problem is that there was, there's still so much promotion in the internet of incredible bots that make incredible percentages. And we will teach you to see these this percentages and, and to really scale them down and understand what the risk level was taking. And if you had on this trading style or system a real risk level, what you would be really earning. Some people see an accountant and said, say, well, look at this board. It made a 1,000%. And the reaction to this can be either that it's a lie, which oftentimes it is, or uh, that it's great. I want it immediately, but I don't want to learn what the bot does. And that's really, really wrong. And this confusion is the first thing you need to clear in your head when you're approaching the automated trading. If it's too good, it's a lie. If something is earning more than an 8% or 10% per month, that's already a lot, actually. There's something really, really wrong there in risk terms. Because the top traders in the world, the George Soros's, the Renaissance Technologies, they make around 100% per year. And they have technology, and they have mathematicians, and they have everything, actually, in their favor. And they're market making, and they're the big sharks. So if you see a bot that is doing something close to that, it's probably either extremely high risk or not audited account. So that's really what harms all this hype, all these people looking for the crazy bots, uh, people that have no idea whatsoever about risk, this is really harming. 
the automated trading industry. And please stay away for, for, from that. You can make a decent living, yes. You can make a reasonable percentage, yes. But everything which is unreasonable, it's not true. Okay? Or over leveraged incredibly. Incredibly. And it didn't lose the account because those months were good for the bot. But it doesn't mean that the bot should be traded that way. Okay? So that's one of the problems with automated trading. People are confusing. Martingale, hedge system, grid system, arbitrage. We forbid all these four trading styles in our education. Uh, our students know that uh, it's basically like talk, talking to, uh, let me put this parallel, which is a bit strong, to alcohol addicts, right? The first thing is you need to get rid of this. You need to get rid of the idea that it will work. It doesn't work. Alcohol never works, right? So high risk trading will never work either. It's, it's ludopathy, uh, ludopathy, right? So we don't do this. And you're approaching automated trading because you think it's going to be the solution. The quick fix, that's a wrong way. We, we're doing just only conservative trading systems, trending, scalping, breakout, and we're not, never trading them with marking yields, never with a hedge system, never with grid trading. We don't do arbitrage. For example, we don't make arbitrage between brokers or we don't do arbitrage between pairs without stop losses. There is bots out there that do this, but it's not the way to start. So in automated trading, really, it, to go without education is much, much more difficult than in manual trading. There is so much info on the Internet about manual trading, about trading strategies. And you can, you can learn, really. You can just watch videos in YouTube. You can learn a lot coming to Simon's RTC. There's so much value in, this, in these lectures, right? But there is not so much in automated trading. That's the truth. There is not so many mentors. There's not so many lecturers that will give you really the, the whole thing about the trading. So, so you need education. Pablo? Yes. I don't think you can see the questions, um, but there are a couple of questions here I'd like to okay. put to you, if I may. Richard well, says, he says, how do you decide what type of market to trade? Is that automated as well, or do you decide on that and then decide which robot strategy to activate? I, we basically, it's a very good question. We basically trade the bots all, all the year. We, we usually don't stop them unless they do wrong. But there is a way to decide it. It's called market regime. You can look it up in Google. And what market regime does, it tells you if it's a trending moment. Uh, you would study, for example, uh, the volatility. And you would put it across, uh, for example, like an indicator like ADX, which is trendability. And you would check in, uh, when you have a strong daily uh, ADX, for example, and a good ATR, you have a trending moment, and you'd be doing trend systems. It can be calculated as well. It's a little bit complex. The other solution is what we do. We trade the whole year, and when the bot is doing bad, we just stop it. We don't watch so much the market conditions. We just watch only the performance of the bot. And based on that, we make conclusions uh, backwards. So let's say the trend systems are doing badly. Let's reduce the lot size. But we don't watch so much the market. We simplified it basically by but, just watching but, the results. But which markets do you do you trade? Do you make a decision on which markets to to trade? Yeah, we trade everything. We trade all thirty currency pairs, plus indices, and some commodities. I mean, not many commodities. We trade a not more than eleven bots. You could be, for example, trading. One bot on the DAX, so you get an idea. The other bot could be trading euro dollar, and the other bot could be trading gold. So, so we have an idea, and they play together, and we just simply backwards see this bot is doing bad already the last two months. Let's turn it off. That's the easy way, actually. The other way is I can put it here in the chat. You can look it up. It's called market regime. You could decide which markets are good for this trading style with these formulas. And it's in Wikipedia. It's explained, actually, in the internet. 
What about drawdown? Um, what sort of percentage do you risk on trades, or do the bots risk on trades, individual trades, and on total capital? That's a very good question, and as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take a real account of a student, which I think is the best way to show the proof of the pudding. I could also take one of mine, but I'm going to take a, a student's account, and a, you can have the link. A, just actually watch it on yourself, on your own. And it's here in what we call, it's my FX book. It's a, it's a, it's a website that's for free. It's like the Facebook of Forex. I don't know if everybody's acquainted with it. And this is a real account. The student was putting a capital of five grand, as you can see here. And the student made uh, around 60% earnings in five months. We'll be analyzing this in a minute. And this is like a 60% earnings. That's audited. It's an audited account. It's not my invention. It's not a PDF. Here's the link. I want to put it in the chat. Everybody can study this at home. And I can show you another account later of, of my own. So what he was risking here is 16 euros. 16 euros on average per trade on a 5,000 euro capital. We are talking here a very, very, very small risk. We are talking a 0 0.3%. You understand? Because 5,000 euros, if we're risking 15 euros, like or 16, which is very close, that's a 0 0.3%. And the worst trade, you see it here. I hope you see the screen well. I'm, I'm trying to, to come yeah. here with the mouse. It's fine. Yes, it's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, he risked only 100 euros. 100 euros is a 2%. So that means, actually, this student did uh, the worst trade, he lost a 2%, and on average, the student is risking a 0.3%. The student did a lot of trades. Not every student is so good, okay? They did 1,700 trades over this month, and with this little risk, they made a 60% earning in what I call a very beautiful curve. And that's the aggregated curve here. You can see that, which was very neat. Now he's in drawdown, it's quite honest, the account is still visible. They actually made 100%, and he got into drawdown. But still, uh, only 20% drawdown, which is close to be closed, because as we lectured the other day with Simon over here, when you pass beyond that 23% drawdown, you should be stopping everything. It was the last lecture here in London Investment Week, and that's a real account. So it answers the question, it's a very, very low risk. Why? because he's trading a lot of things. He's trading, you can go here, and you can see he's trading a lot of different pairs. He's trading exotics, he's trading the Swiss against the yen, which is quite an exotic pair, but at the same time trading the euro dollar. And that's the whole game, the combination of trading systems. But that's how we trade, actually. We would be trading, just to answer these questions, always below a 0.5% risk. It's really ridiculous. It's, it's very, very low, but more systems together. So I put the link here. You can have a look at it, or you can email us if you didn't see it in the chat, and I'm going to send it back to you, and, and uh, that's a way to show the results, actually. And, and that's the beauty of automated trading, reducing the risk to earn more. Well, I think that brings us neatly to the end. Uh, Thomas is asking, um, well, first of all, Don was asking, do you trade other markets than FX? Well, I think you've just covered that. Y yes, you do, FX, commodities. And uh, Thomas says, what about recommendations on learning where to do the programming? Um, I think I think you're, I, I, you're probably on the 29th of April. It's a good... <laughs> yes, yes, actually, that's... That's what I would recommend if you, if you if we can share. I'm going to show you a link. We I'll have a lecture. The, yeah, I've just yeah. put in the chat box for everybody. Exactly. You should just come to a free lecture on the 29th of April, and Simon already shared it here. It's it's going to be a, an event of a full day. Let me let me just share the screen here. We do this event. Folks, what about so, folks that get into London? I know there's a lot of people here in in different parts of the world. What's the then, best thing for them to do? Then they should sign up to our website, allaboutexpertadvisors.com. You have it down here, the address. There is a, a sign-up 
link at the very end of the site uh, or register to the event on April, even if you're not coming, just register and uh, indicating comments that you want just to come for webinars. We'll be doing webinars in April and so you get an idea exactly how we do things and I'm going to show now also our YouTube channel and all these videos are being recorded, also the lectures we had in London. Uh, you can watch them so you get a better idea exactly how we do automated trading because it's quite unique our style. Uh, I would consider myself, I've been watching around, I've been also lecturing in Hong Kong and other places like Italy and soon in Germany, Spain I've done very often as I'm a Spaniard myself and here's our YouTube channel I would recommend you use subscribe here and every new video we're, we're not uh, uploading videos we just started like five months ago but uh, so every new video you will get an email immediately that's all the free education and later on uh, you should come to our paid education which is actually the way to really get the whole information. Okay. And um, it, Pablo, it's, it, it's free. The event in London is free, isn't it? Yes, the event in London is fully free. Yeah. Uh, it's sponsored by Axie Trader. What we recommend there is that you open an account with Axie Trader because we are going to give you two bots for free. Uh, these two bots, when you you saw my students' account, right? They, I would say 50% of this account is done by our bots the ones that we give out for free and okay. it's in a beautiful hotel Kensington Close, you just need to sign up, it's a very long day course I mean you need to come up very early, it's on a Friday uh, this time and you need to come ideally for the whole day we have people coming from Belgium, from other okay. countries, from North Pablo, England we're going to have to wrap it up I'm afraid, I'm sorry to yes, uh, yes. just about on, on the 7 o'clock so you've uh, sure. I have put the link in for the the, the event um, so people will be able to go and see that. We'll also include it on the email that we sent to Perfect. tomorrow. Um, so so nobody will be in any doubt uh, how to get in touch with you and how to get onto the onto the event. It sounds very good. I know the last one was very good. So that's great. We're just waiting in the wings. So Pablo Ortiz from the FX method, thank you very much.